Hello and welcome to yet another AI business episode, episode number 20, in which we're gonna talk about AI to measure emotions. And Palantir, if if you're a long-time listener of the podcast, you know we care deeply about Palantir. It's one of the most fascinating companies out there, you know? Um, hey, question. And- <laughs> what happened to our usual intro guy? Yeah. Who, who the I heck are you? Him. He had more energy. He had a nice deep voice. <laughs> it sounded like there's a gun to your head forcing you, you to do this intro. Fiber? And to help me discuss AI, emotions, and all things Palantir, I'm pleased to welcome Sebastian Moss, deputy de- editor of DCD and a master of data centers. I don't know. Yeah, or or do, yeah. do you care more about nuclear waste? What do you care uh, more about? I, lo- I, I love my nuclear waste, and we should all care about it more, but I spend more time writing about data centers because the world is cruel. There's not enough money out there to become a full-time nuclear waste journalist. And uh, less knowledgeable in the nuclear waste department, we have TNG Fu, the... Wait, what's your official job title? (laughs) My official title is uh, Senior Producer of Mac's Worst Nightmare. TNG Fu, the digital content producer for Informa and AI business specifically. How are you doing, TM? I'm still wondering what happened to our usual intro. Is this Myanmar? Because there's been a coup. No, no, no! <laughs> Seriously, yeah, it's episode twenty. Um, I'm, 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 I'm changing things. This is a revolution. So, um, what has been happening this week in the world of AI? Well, one story that caught my attention is about Vivo. You might know Vivo as the guys who show you music videos on YouTube. Uh, that's primarily their purpose. That's what they're known for. They are a company founded by some of the world's r- largest um, record producers and uh, copyright holders. <laughs> And um, their entire thing was about monetizing music videos on the internet. So what they've done this week is they've launched a new service called Moods. And Moods um, lets advertisers target specific moods in, 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 in songs and music videos. So they have worked with a data specialist called Music Match to analyze their catalog of music videos and to tag them up. So at the moment they have fun, heartfelt, impassioned and empowering. And the idea is, you know, potential advertisers that want to advertise against specific music videos that relate to these keywords they can now do that but the question i really want to ask what is is what does that mean for death metal who will want to advertise against death metal if you're given the option to to to, to choose you know moods of of the music you want to advertise around before we even get to death metal i hope there are more words keywords that that describe moods and emotions than those offered right it sounds like it's just it's it's very generalizing just to have those five words. <laughs> but it, they're also all positive words. And yeah. like music is is not all positive. And I think some of that is just from a PR perspective. They're announcing this new thing. They don't want to let it be too obvious that they're also selling to like uh, sad and depressed and vulnerable people, <laughs> who are generally the best people. Crest for the music. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Okay, um, this is not the end of the project, so they're going to continue expanding it. This is basically the first crop, so the idea is, uh, yeah, yeah, they will tag more music. But the question is, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, so uh, not all music is positive. Some of the music is downright depressing, and that's not bad. A lot of the art is is sad, you know, like it, 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 it perhaps inflicts negative emotions, and it's still very valuable to the human experience. So what happens when all advertisers care about are the positive things. I, I think that there's one of those things where like there's advertising and then there's advertising of your advertising. Mm-hmm. So Nike might want people to think that they're advertising active and upbeat stuff. And then that in itself is an advertising to campaign to say we've aligned ourselves with those values. But in reality, they advertise themselves to depress people who want to be happy by buying shoes right the people who buy their shoes uh, they should they should have a study and say most people who buy a pair of new shoes every year don't work out ever no i mean they're happier than the people that make the shoes but they're probably still not happy <laughs> i don't know if that's true actually there's no there's no evidence that that's <laughs> there's actually no correlation the between shoes there's and no, happiness right. <laughs> but there's also like people watch or, or listen to music of that have you know an emotional level for different reasons Mm -hmm. so you might listen to happy music because you are happy or you might listen to happy music because you're sad and trying to make yourself happy and vice versa with with sad or energetic 
or relaxing music. So often it's the contrast of what emotional state you're in because you're trying to bring yourself to that via the music. And then an advert that is like, oh, hey, isn't it great to be happy? Let's all be happy together. Probably isn't the best advert for your depressed state. Um, um, what interests me is in order to take these things, they actually had to define these emotional space, states. So they had to define in code what fun actually looks like. They had to define <laughs> in code what empowering looks like. And this is, I think, like the most fascinating thing. Because, yeah, machines obviously cannot understand the full range of human emotions and they can't even approximate it. So what was baked into the code? At the most, they seem to be going from the perspective of having the AI listen to the music and go like, oh, you know, it's upbeat because there's a lot going on or something like that, rather than what would probably make more sense at a current AI level, which would be just tagging it as a human and going, well, Taylor Swift makes these kind of songs, uh, Rammstein makes these kinds of songs, and, and going from there, I think this might be, again, a, a matter of advertising in itself by saying look how cool and modern we are by embracing these ai tools even if they're a bit pointless so the thing you think this is marketers helping themselves almost 100 percent. i think that's 100%. ai pat on the back yeah I, i'm also i really really suspicious of emotional tracking with ai um in, in this case it's more from the perspective of the product and trying to match what the the emotional level of the product is and then reach people but you're seeing more and more products that are trying to base on mm -hmm. working out the emotions of a human by facial cues or, or voice cues. And, and that's really getting into this new era of phrenology and physiognomy, which is absolutely terrible, super racist, um, super flawed. There's a great study, the criminality from face illusion that came out last year that really goes into pretty much all the major research papers that are pro AI phrenology and carefully debunks every single one. You know, as it stands, we do not have the ability to look at someone's face or head shape or any of these things and work out their worldview. And even if we could, we shouldn't. But we definitely can't. That's the main thing. Like, we, we really can't. And anyone that tells you they can is trying to sell you snake oil uh, and make the world worse. Well, it's not even AI. It's like, I don't even think most human I've encountered have the capacity to properly read another human's emotion, you, right. you know? Um, I can't even say that about Max. <laughs> 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 well, I'm saying like some people, and, and also some people are really good at hiding their emotions, and it's just yeah, such a I'm such a. a small... I'm a just an inveterate liar. I am always lying. <laughs> right. I always <laughs> just assume your heartbeat never goes above sixty. You know, you're, yeah, it is. it's a flat line. <laughs> you're a flatliner. <laughs> um, right. It's but, never a true emotion. Right, and there's um, also, also there's songs we like. There, my sister loves "Season in the Sun," and "Season in the Sun" sounds like a happy song. And she identified that as a as a happy song, but it's actually a sad song. Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. I would love this AI to take a crack at that and figure out if it's happy, a, a, a empowering, or uplifting. <laughs> you know, like. It's a but I don't even know. But we can actually have a conversation about that right now. Do we even think that as a happy song or a sad song? Because I think that's like a complicated, a man's journey with struggle with God. You don't really care for songs. You you don't care for music, do you? It's like a very personal thing. Talk about David. Reference the Bible. And he's saying hallelujah, which is a worship word, but he's not really worshiping God, right? So I don't even know what that, what the full extent of that is, so, because he's a poet, you know? Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. And they're just like, yeah, it's also, it's also a song about sin and the kind of like grave bodily injuries and, and chopping off heads. So yeah, yeah, you're right. It's just like, it's one of the, it, it's a fantastically complicated piece of music, but the way it sounds, you know, like if, 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 if you didn't pay any attention to the world words, I would I would say this is, this is a happy, uplifting song, you know? <laughs> So no, but here's the example, right? We've been talking about something that is terrible, bad for society, bad as a company idea, mainly a scam, but we've said it in really positive tones and we've been laughing. So if an AI was listening to this and we had AI generated ads next to it, we'd have an uplifting positive ad following it. Uh, okay, no, no, I've, I've got one. So um, perhaps this an, or an algorithm similar to this could help us define the elusive genre of gym music because everybody knows how gym music sounds like. Everybody knows these power songs, but like, are they are they a, a formal genre? No. I, is there anything connecting them? Well, it kind of varies. You know, like it's hard to define gym music, but you know it when you hear it. It's not uplifting. It's just lifting. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it it has to have like sudden. Eye of the Tiger, like occasionally. No, once oh, the I, blue I, oh, moon. I, I definitely have. I would admit I have Eye of the Tiger in there. 
Everyone has eye of the tiger, but like I, I prefer to try and like disconnect my brain from my body, let my body do its horrible, uncomfortable thing. I feel like you're the guy who actually don't actually meantime. work out, but trying to say that you work out. Nothing you say. Makes I mean, sense. I don't work out much at all, <laughs> especially go. not during the pandemic. But when I do, sure. I try and listen to something. Not, not true. Wow. So, so, so you're developing your body and mind. This is like this. Right. It is perfect. But the other thing is, though, the other thing is, too, I, and not to give them any ideas, I also think there's a huge missed opportunity there with the, the negative feelings because I think that's where people actually shop. Like, oh, yeah. if I'm happy, I'm going out. I'm 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 spending my money. You know, I'm going out to the park. I'm you know I'm hanging out with friends. You know, I'm going to the restaurants. But you don't need to advertise me for that, right? And but I don't I'm remember sad, what any of those things are like. But <laughs> yeah, no, no. I think advertisers. You're right. Advertisers want you at your most vulnerable. That's what they, yeah, they right. want it's, you. It's oh, when you do yeah. your I don't know uh, 11 p.m. You know midnight. You know scrolling of your phone and. Uh, I, I, you know, me being a married person, I don't do that as much. But I, I, I assume that you, you both do that. Phone is the last thing you see before you go to bed, and the phone. Is oh, the doom scrolling! Like, oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Bane of my life. Can't stop. Wait, you go to bed? <laughs> just stay up the whole time. I just sleep on the couch. It's the only way. Speaking of overhyped AI, Palantir. Max. Well, segue, man. <laughs> oh, hey, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We need to talk about Palantir. And actually, like, I, I myself am operating a, a drinking game. So every time we say Palantir or Thiel, I drink. Uh, this should be very interesting. <clears throat> this is the drinking so, game you're only uh, playing with yourself. None of us are actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have, I, I, I have two coffees here because you're, you're the only person with beer. You enforce it on us, but you're doing it yourself just so the listeners don't understand. Like, it's uh, not like we have a drinking problem. He has it's really problem. just Max who's I'm, I'm, smoking his fourth cigarette of the day and then he's drinking his third beer. I mean, you mean throughout the podcast, but yes, um, I'm trying yes, to be a very old school editor in my values and my uh, behaviors. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so today... Uh, <laughs> No, it's not actually today. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, was a big day for <laughs> Palantir, the company you might have heard about if you heard this podcast before. And this is where I drink. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot. Of I'm, I'm going to do a video of this podcast. Are you okay with me doing the? Uh, I'm going to do this I'm segment now. Hide okay. my face. <laughs> Don't hide your face. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sebastian. Okay, go ahead. Staying in this so, 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 so Palantir has, of course, IPO, the great valuation, and the company has been going from strength to strength, even though it has, like, a somewhat immoral business. Um, so, um, what happened um, a week ago was Palantir has agreed a reselling agreement. Oh, uh, sorry, this is where I drink. You can't do it every time you say Palantir. This is going to take an hour. You, you, you already said it three times. I think it's okay. Just do Peter Thiel. Yeah, just Peter Thiel. <laughs> Because then we had we had the initial segment which was on feelings and now you're gonna it's run on out of beer. Feelings. You're gonna run out right. of beer in five minutes if you just. I need another time. beer. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let me let, let, let me continue the intro. So um, <laughs> what happened? To <laughs> so the company has agreed a deal with IBM, a reselling deal. So Palantir, you know, like founded and funded by Peter Thiel. This is where I drink. <laughs> um. <laughs> For listeners, right, because Tian's probably going to edit this down substantially, this has been like an hour of <laughs> Max just trying to say the intro and then being like, oh, wait, I have said the magic words. <laughs> yeah, just so people understand, he played that game with himself every morning So yeah. with, the, without the, the podcast. Volunteer. <laughs> Palantir develops data and AI tools for governments and large organizations. They have targeted in their initial years organizations with uh, revenues above 500 million. So we're talking really mm. big fish. They've achieved 15 billion valuation. And reportedly, they did that with how many salespeople? 30. They had 30 wow. salespeople. And they built a company worth 15 billion. Mm. Thanks to the deal with IBM, which was announced a week ago, they will get access to two and a half thousand salespeople, IBM's entire wow. global network. This means Palantir, you know, like suddenly like increases the reach by like the, the you know, like a factor of a hundred. So there's going to be a lot more Palantir. It's going to be everywhere. Uh, Palantir <laughs> and its AI are you know, set to take over the world with a little bit of help from IBM, which, like, if you know one thing about IBM, it's fucking fantastic at selling. Like, IBM has been 
just just you know coasting on the back of its salesman right. for years. They're mostly just advertising at this point. <laughs> um, so, question: uh, If I can ask a follow up, um, is this the rise of Palantir or the fall of IBM? Okay, so IBM has been falling for uh, for <laughs> so many years, right? Yeah. So, uh, pretty much, you know, the night. When the internet came along, they've that was it for them, right? They the internet <laughs> tech giants came took yeah. over. They were they were slow to innovate on cloud, even though they bought software back in the day. Yep. They've been slow to, to innovate on their foundry business. So, for example, um, how much did they sell their foundry business to Global Foundries in two thousand fourteen? Seven billion. No, they paid <laughs> go, Global Foundries one and a half billion to take it off them because they were losing so much money. Right. Mm. So, so since then it's just been a you know a steady decline. Um, you 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 went from an era where they were the tech company, uh, yeah. working in every single enterprise, and yeah. uh, you know uh, German military hunter. Uh, and since then it's just declined. You know mainframes really aren't that big a deal anymore. They're still hanging in there. They're still making money off of that. Still uh, supercomputers. Supercomputers. They have. Uh, they they again are losing out on. So they. The last generation of supercomputers are pretty big, and they had Summit, which is the world's most powerful supercomputer. But the next generation, the Exascale era, that's dominated by Cray, which has now been bought by HPE. IBM have not won a single mm -hmm. Exascale contract. Cray have won three and have won pretty much all the other major contracts. Chip business, Power, Power 10. Uh, you know, they, They've did so many layoffs. Some of the employees have said that Power is yeah. essentially dead. We are talking tens of thousands of people being laid off. Yeah. You know, just cities worth of people have been laid off from IBM over the past few years, and another ten thousand are set to be laid laid off, and about half the company is set to be spun out into another company currently named Nuco, but it will have a new name. So, so this is a declining, uh, fading enterprise. So it's safe uh, to say IBM is not doing so well. That's what you're getting. No, at. so so they're definitely not doing well. They they have some exciting <laughs> things. I I will give it to them. They have uh, one of the most open and and you know interesting research R and D divisions. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I've spoken to them a whole bunch of times. Again, it's unfortunately the the funding in that has recently been slashed yeah. several times. Uh, they've tried to get Watson for data center uh, operations efficiency. Again, not been great. So, but they've done pretty well at selling something that isn't fantastic. Like Max said, their sales team is one of their best assets so right. to give them now a product that is arguably better still not ideal because uh, we can talk about palantir's latest financial results next but Absolutely. Um, this is where i drink <laughs> no man <laughs> okay but, um, he's, he's still doing it okay <laughs> <laughs> but but uh you know palantir's offering is better than ibm's offering ibm's uh connection with enterprises connection with government lobbyist network um, and and general reputation and and history of sales is better than Palantir, so it is a match made in heaven. Uh, anybody in the film industry will understand where it's like an independent. It's a, when when Spielberg came, went off and and, and designed and, and created DreamWorks, they 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 have great products: The Prince of Egypt, uh, Saving Private Ryan, or uh, Gladiator, <laughs> but they don't have the network to distribute it to the rest of the country. So they have to rely work with Warner Brothers, Paramount. They have to work with somebody else. It's less about the studio itself, but it's more like could this change things around for Palantir? Palantir has been doing really well recently, if we look at it from a share price perspective. And it's important to note that they are one of the companies that Wall Street Bets, the Redditor group, uh, is involved with. So their their share price Max, has been what are you doing? around a bit. <laughs> what are yeah, you Max, doing? you're very distracting. <laughs> I've done the standard Max thing. Beer, all I regret <laughs> decided to put this on video. But Do I start again or do I just... No, I'm you just power through. through. You're just ahead. So... Um, so that they, they, they've become one of the meme stocks, you know, not mm. not to the extent of GameStop or, or Tilray, but yeah. you, you have to always look at any of these meme stocks that are being used by Reddit with a pinch of salt because they've kind of transcended reality. Um, yeah. But but they've been going on a tear, you know. They they signed a bunch of recent contracts. BP, lovely guys. Uh, mining giant Rio Tinto, also lovely guys. Uh, <laughs> Space Force, totally a real. Uh, military organization i've got a question seb so you've obviously watched palantir for a very long time mm. you know about the ins and outs of the company what is the actual bloody product they're selling <laughs> right so they have a, a, a number of products uh that they're, they're like their biggest one is probably foundry 
And again, it, it's all about this kind of single pane data where you put the data in and you try and get efficiencies. Um, they will try and be more hands-on. So obviously they're working with the NHS here to try and mm. work out where should we do vaccines? Where are hotspots of, of COVID? Um, London it, in general. Yeah. yeah, London. They're trying to they're working with BP to try and make it cheaper to extract fossil fuels because that's what the world needs. Uh, Rio Tinto, they're working on how to ensure that the extraction of resources while uh, not following human rights labor laws is easy. <laughs> um, but so what they're, they're trying to do with Watson is more of that standard big data stuff that you'd expect from a company. So it's less hands-on, it's less specialized. Um, mm. the, uh, the IBM salesperson job is to make it sound like it's specialized for you god help us soul i remember the last time we talked about palantir max <laughs> Take excuse time. me what are you? <laughs> uh that's it that's the end of my sentence no, i'm just kidding the last <laughs> time we mentioned the last time we mentioned them um they you were gleefully saying that max you were saying like oh they just went on the market they they value some about 11 dollars and they went a little under and they were about 950 950 you know um opening the market but now they're at 28 like but the, that they, that, they were, that they our, our celebration only lasts about you know our, our your joy lasts about a week you know sebastian and they, uh, sorry, they, they sorry. are they they are a meme stock. This is what, what You're people right, need to realize. There are different right. classes of meme stocks. They're not quite quite the same as GME. GME was a rebellion against the system, whereas yeah. Palantir stock is right. um the guys from the alt right coming to play. Right. And and George Soros hilariously. George Soros is of course a Palantir uh, early stage Palantir investor. I just the, mentioned uh, his name just keep, open up a whole, a, a, no whole can of words for <laughs> another <laughs> drinking game no, but it, it, it's just funny because obviously he's painted <laughs> as this uh, left wing conspiracy icon meanwhile right. Peter Thiel is quite rightly painted as this right wing conspiracy icon right and the reality is wealth attracts wealth that that's the true money is you know, the belief club. yeah money, money, is, money is the belief yeah. uh, any, anyone that thinks George Soros values things above that would be you know he doesn't even say he does so this. George you're, Soros you're, you're funds. giving him too much credit right yeah yeah so so he he funded Palantir which as we've spoken about previously has contracts with ICE and helped them with their child separation policy uh, has contracts with the military industrial complex and again fossil fuel businesses despite right, so. you know the fact that Texas is ICE California is constantly on fire Virginia is sinking I don't think you guys seem to focus on that enough I think the point you're getting at going from Palantir to all the way to climate <laughs> change is that Palantir ultimately is a company that's that that raises a lot more questions than than you know about on their products and what they offer and the things they're doing because as Max was implying to that we don't we don't really know their products instead you have yeah. to kind of go two steps forward to oh that's what they're doing so the the idea of bringing IBM the people who are really good at selling stuff the, their sales force to this formerly 30 sales team big company can be uh depends on how you look at it can be catastrophic or it can be uh if you're a stockholder if you're a stakeholder uh a, a great the greatest news you ever heard so that's what we're getting at this can be this is less of an ibm story but more of a palantir story and it even if they're operating at a loss uh, who knows what they're capable of uh five years down the line absolutely I think I, I've, we've mentioned it before on the on the podcast. One of my favorite things about Palantir is how honest they are. Like they work with terrible, evil companies, but they don't hide it. They don't try and spin it. You know, the, the, this, the they're, CEO they're okay says, with "Yeah, we've they're killed. Okay yeah, it. we've done yeah. stuff that has led to deaths." <laughs> yep. he, he said that we've we've killed people with our products, right? And he's happy with that. He's fine with it. You know, there's an argument that it's a part of society. It's going to happen. I prefer that to again. We you know we had a Google employee on the podcast before, and that the way that they try and spin it as a positive, happy company when they're doing those same things. You know, yeah. Google is a major contract with Saudi Aramco, but they try and sell themselves as a consumer-friendly, happy business. I respect Palantir's evil hustle. <laughs> That's the thing. No, no, no. Because they're they're young, they sexy, and they've got the bad boy energy. And I think like in mm. tech, for some reason, that's right now a selling point. You know, like saying that those guys, you know, like the liberal bleeding hearts, they're not gonna do it. We will. 
We will literally, we will yeah. bomb, and we will destroy, and we will, we will, we will do whatever you want. We will surveil, and it's just like, and and that is now a selling point. And it's just like being an immoral company has its benefits. No, yeah, because they're they you're not limited. You're, you're not limiting yourself to to public opinions. You are a, a savage saying like there are if they're okay with it, and they're making money, or at least they're on paper they're making their stock is going they're up. Making and there's people, right? Yeah, they're making revenue. And then somebody have to do that stuff, right? And it might as well be Palantir. And who knows? I I feel like there's gonna be other companies coming up if, if that become a trend. It'll be like, hey, Palantir has a very successful, uh, 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 you know. A business model by not answering any to anybody and just doing whatever they think it's where the money is and just taking out the cash and nobody sees the opportunity why can't we do that i feel like if they become bigger then it opens up a, a window that i don't know if it's a good thing but, but maybe who knows it, it's profit is profit right the the, the thing to note in the ibm announcement is that palantir was very honest about the fact that this is not f- going to be the only time they do this and they mm. hinted that there are more ones coming in the future and mm. i think it, it it's very likely we will see them actually take inspiration from what IBM are doing and try to offer other company services with, upon their services because what the dream of every business is to be that backbone so if yeah. they become that yeah. backbone you know with their Gotham product which is again about kind of aggregating data if they can then all the, the Palantir competitors are forced to sell their services on Gotham or on Apollo which is another one of their things mm-hmm. then they win even if a new guy comes along even if you know Foundry is the UK's kind of uh, evil competitor, if they get better, if they get bigger, but they're still forced to use Palantir. But the beauty of it all uh, is Jeff Bezos, my again Matt's <laughs> brush drink in that one, uh, who by the way has just once again become the world's richest man. Hats off to him. The beauty is again it's about being that backbone behind it all because the backbone behind Palantir is Amazon Web Services. So, <laughs> Yeah. At the end of the day, it always comes back to Jeffy B. It basically come back to the house. The house cannot lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't matter cannot. what you do, right. Jeff Bezos wins. Okay, so you can find us and me specifically at Tian Chi Fu on mostly on LinkedIn. Sometimes, sometimes I don't like to mention this, but I and I can be found on Instagram. Again, I don't <laughs> I'm, I don't use Instagram very often. <laughs> That's, or mention it very often. <laughs> Uh, but I mention it very often. <laughs> uh, if you see one, if, if you want to see some uh, cool photos of uh, of our New York City office and my office over the years, you can find you can go on Instagram. Uh, who's not on Instagram is Sebastian. Are you not on Instagram at all, or do you have like a burner account that you use to 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 stalk your ex and and to terrorize your friends with some snarky comments over the years? I don't stop using the internet. <laughs> it's the old-fashioned way. You have a stalker blog, right? No, I, you know, you I've, read, I've got. You update every once in a while. <laughs> I have a Facebook account, and that's enough Facebook for me. And it's already already feels like too much. Um, I do not have an Instagram. If people keep wanting it, you know, I know the campaign is rising, just like the I like Ike campaign. This has been actually the best idea ever. Playing a drinking game. I am loving this. Uh, you can find me on AI Business, mostly sober, and also on uh, Twitter <laughs> no. at Max Smolax. And and Peter Thiel, if you're listening, like sue us already, because we're gonna continue doing this.